Good evening, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It's about 9.30 Eastern Time on Saturday. And let's take a look at what's going on in the tropics. That's 9.30 p.m. Did a blog post earlier today, figured I'd follow it up with a video discussion on a very busy tropics this evening. Hurricane Jose here, Tropical Storm Maria threatening the islands over here, and Tropical Storm Lee, which will be a non-event. Thank goodness, because we have enough going on. In the eastern Pacific, we have Otis, which is also a non-event over here. And then we have Norma, which is just off of the Baja. And let's just start with this, and we'll click on the map. Let's get rid of that X right there. And do this. View the full image. And you can see that the main issue here, no longer a hurricane, uh, cooler water up here, so a more stable air mass around. And uh, this will come up, and the steering currents kind of collapse on it and it'll just die away into a remnant low in that area, but the moisture up in this region could dump heavy rain as the system moves up and dies out. But other than that, really not too big of an issue for the Baja. Certainly nothing like we saw as an example several years ago when we had Norbert and Odeal, especially Odeal coming up to Cabo San Lucas. Nothing like that here, but do keep in mind that these heavy rains that could spread up through here can be problematic for obvious reasons. Looking at the wide shot of the Atlantic Basin this evening, uh, fairly healthy Hurricane Jose, expanding in its overall size, probably gaining some intensity. You can see that deep burst of convection right there, indicating strong upward motion over the warm waters of the western Atlantic. Here is Maria really starting to get together uh, over the very warm waters of the deep tropics here. Has that curled up sort of nautilus shell. You ever seen a nautilus? Google that. The nautilus creature, uh, not the submarine from science fiction fame, but it's got that curled up look to it. And when we see that, those strong convective bands, that tells me at least that uh, Maria is going to be on a strengthening trend, and the models support that as well. And this definitely poses a direct threat to portions of the islands here. We'll look at the track map for it in just a moment. Here, of course, is Tropical Storm Lee, deep convection associated with it as well. But we do have some northerly shear impacting this system. You see where it's got that rounded edge right there, but Maria does not. Maria has these banded edges coming in. Lee doesn't, and so that shows me that Lee is battling upper-level winds that are keeping the thunderstorms from organizing into those strong convective bands that bring in copious amounts of energy, and moisture and feeding that low-level engine that we call the eye wall and the core of the system. So let's look at the different track maps here, first of all, for Jose. The good news is almost no threat that this makes a direct landfall uh, with the center of circulation along the United States coastline. That being said, the swells that are coming out will continue to affect uh, portions of the Leeward Islands, which is off the map down here. Uh, even the Greater Antilles, you know, we're thinking Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas. Uh, you know, Jose is generating these swells that radiate outward in all directions, and those will continue to impact uh, portions of the East Coast. Great for surfers, as I have mentioned several times, but for swimmers, you have to be careful, especially of that shore break and the neck and back injuries that that can cause. So please do consult no local National Weather Service products beach hazard statements, and when all else fails, you can simply just ask a lifeguard, somebody on beach patrol, or call the local beach police department and just say, hey, look, uh, I'm not familiar with the area. I'm headed down with the kids or whatever, and we just want to know, are the beach conditions dangerous or what? Because they do have in the headline from the National Hurricane Center that Jose will be generating life-threatening rip currents, and so that also is a problem that people need to be aware of. For Maria out here in the tropical Atlantic, uh, the bad news is we have a hurricane watch in the pink area for some of the same areas that were just devastated by Irma. And so this passing perhaps the center of circulation just to the south of some of these islands and maybe even right over Puerto Rico uh, obviously is very concerning. This could be a major hurricane by the time it reaches Puerto Rico. San Juan, this is bad news for this area. This could be a devastating landfall 
for this region, and we're going to have to watch this very closely. I'll be focusing more of my attention on Maria with time, but not at the expense of the other systems that are out there, especially Jose. Uh, real quickly here, looking at Lee, again, not a problem. We're not going to even worry about this much, and I may not mention it simply because it's not really an issue. So let's focus on what will be an issue, and that's certainly a little bit with Jose and a lot coming up with Maria. So if we look at the weather.gov homepage, you can see east coast of the United States here, there's different watches and warnings in effect. And just as an example, if I click on eastern North Carolina, you can also enter your zip code, and you see what's going on. You've got different watches and warnings, and the offshore waters is a tropical storm watch. I don't think that's necessarily up for right along the beaches, but, I mean, it certainly isn't mentioned in the public advisory, so we'll see. This might just be the offshore waters if I understand that correctly. But you see this right here, this purple, this high surf advisory. They're looking at the potential of these different WFOs or weather forecasts office. Uh, you got one down here in the Newport Moorhead City area, and then there's one up here in Wakefield, Virginia, and that covers all of the Outer Banks out here. And then even the Weather Service office in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is down here off the map, they're going to be responsible for these beach areas. And so you need to read these and read about these high surf advisories as an example. And if we read about it real quick here, I'll show you what you get. Uh, it's written again by a real person. It's not computer generated. And you got the headline, the dangerous rip currents uh, for all area beaches through Sunday. Long period swell coming in from Jose. And you have minor beach erosion um, and dangerous rip currents. Okay, so be sure to read this for your local area. And you can... Uh, again, go to weather.gov, put in your zip code if you're concerned about it, and you return this information. Um, the timing and the tides, this is important right here. The most likely time for strong rip currents is a couple, hour, the couple of hours either side of low tide, which will be around 10.30 a.m. today. Of course, this was for Saturday, and this gets updated every few hours. And then they talk about that the surf height, 6 to 9 feet, from Rodanthe to Cape Lookout and 5 to 7 feet elsewhere, and I do believe this will build over time. And they give good advice here about what happens if you get caught in a rip current. So seriously, read it, pull it up on your iPad or other smartphone, smart device, whatever. Weather.gov, your zip code, and look for this high surf advisory and be familiar with that. I want to show you the model guidance here. This is the wide shot at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet up. And this blob of colors here uh, with all of these height lines in here at this level of the atmosphere represents Jose. And this is our area of high pressure, the Bermuda High, if you will, of the Western Atlantic Ridge. And it's fairly thick in the atmosphere through here. And it gets a little thinner overall over here. And so that allows Jose to just move up and around it fairly comfortably offshore which I'll put this into motion in a moment and show you. That right there is Maria, and that right there is Ho um, <laughs> Lee. Not Jose, it's Lee. So let's put this into motion and see what happens over the next five days or so. And you can watch Jose here track up and around the western part of that high pressure area, and it stays safely away from land areas in terms of direct impacts. May see some tropical storm conditions here along the Cape, and the islands of southeastern Massachusetts, and certainly those rip currents and high waves, etc. But no direct, like, hurricane force winds are expected or anything like that. Could be a fairly close call for some, you know, rather strong winds and higher surf for the southeast part of Massachusetts. But we'll wait and see. It's still a couple of days away. And you see what happens also over the next few days. Uh, and by the way, this is the 18Z run. 18 UTC, same as 18Z. This model is updated four times a day. And this is the afternoon run. And in fact, let me just zoom in and show you instead of trying to pick it all out here. This is what it looks like if we put this into motion for the next five days over the western Atlantic so you get a much better resolution. And uh, you see Jose there really, again, we know where that's headed for the most part. I want to focus on Maria as it sneaks into the picture so there's Barbados, so probably coming north of Barbados. And then you've got Guadalupe right there, and maybe passing very close to Guadalupe, unfortunately very close to Antigua and Barbuda. 
Oh, just the horror of it all, right? Unbelievable. And then the folks that are affected over here in Anguilla, uh, down to St. Bart's, etc. The U.S. British Virgin Islands, even Vieques, and then over here to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Not a good thing to see this, and that goes without saying. Uh, and it's strengthening. You can see the vorticity signature getting stronger and stronger with each passing hour. And uh, very possible that this could be a major hurricane, a Category 3, especially. You see right there, it really starts to strengthen as it goes over Puerto Rico, right over the top of the island there. Uh, that's just bad. I mean, honestly, people need to be getting ready. This is not what you want to see, clearly. And beyond the five-day time frame, we'll go to the last shot there. Uh, you see this kind of clipping the northern part of the Dominican Republic, the threat of mudslides, heavy rain. And then, as if this area, I mean, they got the full brunt of Irma, and now Maria coming in. Uh, you just have to scratch your head and say, how is this possible? But sometimes these patterns get entrenched, and you just have to be prepared and deal with it. Uh, this is the intensity guidance here for Maria, and uh, this is the afternoon run. We'll get the later one you know, in an hour or so, but this really shows you some of the modeling bringing it up into Category 4 intensity, but for the most part, the intensity consensus, which is this one right here, uh, indicating it peaking out at a strong Category 3 by Day 4. So very alarming, to say the least. People need to take this very seriously. Uh, the recovery efforts... Obviously, everybody needs a heads up down there and for the areas. I mean, even Puerto Rico was lashed by hurricane force winds on the southern side of Irma. And uh, this is headed your way. Uh, in the meantime, Jose probably peaking out over the next 24 to 36 hours or so. Then it'll encounter cooler waters and it'll have a steady decay in its wind uh, over time. But those winds will probably spread out. It'll kind of deflate. So here's a good analogy. You think of like a big bouncy castle and it's fully inflated and everything is upright and, you know, the kids are having fun and the thing is fully ready to go. But then when it deflates, what does it do? It spreads out as the air goes out of it and the mass of the bouncy castle spreads out on the ground. It's larger. It takes up a larger aerial coverage as it deflates. And you can visualize that. And that's what kind of happens with these tropical cyclones when they start to weaken the core collapses, everything starts to spread out, and so you have a lower overall intensity, but it, but it can impact a larger geographic area. Now, the upper ocean heat content, we're at the peak of the season still. This is a, a few days old. I need to update this, and I will, but it doesn't change that much. Overall, the upper ocean heat content through the path where Maria will be tracking can support very intense hurricanes, and so I cannot emphasize enough that any communications going on down here with people that are dealing with the aftermath of Irma, they need to be fully aware. Maybe get some people out. Airlift them out now. This is coming. You know, there's different countries down here that have responsibilities. They need to work together to make sure people are not completely taken out by Maria. And you know, we have seen surprises. And maybe Maria is weaker than forecast, but we don't want to take the chance that it is much stronger than forecast. That could be horrible. All right, well, that is it for me for tonight. We'll have the overnight global model runs coming out over the next several hours. And then early in the morning, I'll post another video blog and a quick uh, blog post itself on the HurricaneTrack.com site. And, of course, you can follow along on our app. It's called Hurricane Impact on the App Store and Google Play. Just search those two words, Hurricane Impact, and you can get this information all in one nice little package on your Android device or your iPhone it doesn't work very well on iPad. It was not developed for iPad. So keep that in mind, okay? Full disclosure there. And, of course, you can follow on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. All right, that's it from me. Like I said, for tonight, I'll have more for you tomorrow. I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you sometime during the day on Sunday.